Hi everyone, how you doing? Uh, happy, happy Wednesday. I hope you're all okay. Um, I'm still technically on holiday, but I thought I'd do this one this evening since as I'm home and why not, eh? And uh, I've been sewing solidly for two days. Um, I've been catching up with lots of stuff, trying to get on top of the things and get ahead of myself, so, which was really, really nice. Um, been busy today doing the French roses samples and all the prep work for that and uh, I'm really really liking it I heard if you're coming on that class yay you're gonna love it I'm sure um, and if you have if you're not coming on that class why not there's still some spaces not many mind but there's still a few spaces <laughs> um, how are you all is anyone there please do say hello if you are uh, hi Claire hi Jackie Easter oh indeed happy Easter it's, oh it's good Friday isn't it on Friday and then Easter Sunday we've got little sausage coming around and um, we're going to do easter egg hunting stuff which will be nice um so yeah um i've had a lush few days off uh got back from amsterdam on saturday night we had a lovely time away for phil's birthday really really lovely few days just nice to chill you know just nice to actually you know it's oh, gonna sound soppy but bs you know rather than him working me working running around all over the place so it was lovely um hi carol hi ali hi leslie hello my darlings um, right, what we're going to do today is we're, we're going to do another what if block because <laughs> um, I was playing around with some bits and um, I really love our um, modern drunkards path block um, because there's no pins and we're going to do the technique again tonight where it's all very, very gentle and easy and you don't you don't pin anything and it all works really, really well. So we're going to do that. But I was like, well, what if I combine that with a log cabin? So that's what we're going to do. And I'm, I think this would be really interesting. I think it's going to be a really cool block. Um, I've done one, I've made one up um, and we're going to do the log cabin. For those of you who've never done log cabin, if you're new to us then or new to quilting, then we're going to do the log cabin and then we're going to cut into it and turn it into a curve. Uh, let's just say hello to everybody. Hi, Marilyn. Hi, Sue. Hello, lovelies. So you are going to have to excuse the state of this today okay um i know my eyebrows look completely crazy um i've had them tattooed today i've had powder brows done which is like a semi-permanent proper tattoo done on my eyebrows they're incredibly dark it fades it fades after about three or four days so but for the next couple of days i'm slightly groucho marxy <laughs> It is very, very dark, but it doesn't stay like that, okay? So, but um, yeah, I caught myself in the camera the earlier and I was just like, oh, oh, those are strong brows. However, if you do want, ever want your eyebrows done and you're local to us, go and see Jen at Arched and Dangerous. Just Google Arched and Dangerous, Dennis Powers. She's amazing. I've been going to her for about three years now and I've always just had like wax and tint done, but she persuaded, she was like, Let, let's do it let's do a powder brow which is like microblading but the next step up from microblading so I, ha I bit the bullet and had it done today um so and it was nowhere near as bad as I thought it was going to be I thought it was going to be really really painful but actually it was just a little bit irritating so um so yeah definitely worth doing guys if you if you do your brows <laughs> right let, anyway let's go over to the um overhead and then you haven't got to look at my dodgy brows <laughs> And this is what we're going to do tonight. OK, we are going to do uh, we're going to I'm just again, I'm using scraps up. I'm use, going through my boxes of scraps. OK, so this is maybe not the necessarily the best fabrics to have done this in, but you'll get the idea. OK, so I've made a log cabin and then what we're going to do is we're actually going to cut into that and turn it into a curve. OK, so that you get a drunkard's path feel to your quilt, but with log cabin bits here. So. Because I'm going to be using our templates out of the Modern Drunkard's Path pattern, which is on the website, you can find it on there. It got, it's got two different size templates. It's got six and a half and three and a half inch templates. I thought, well, I don't want to do a log cabin with two and a half inch strips. That's going to be a bit big for this size block. However, I've used one and a half inches and it works brilliantly. OK, so um that's what we're gonna do so i've cut up loads and loads of scraps to one and a half inches okay and somewhere haha <laughs> there it is okay so somewhere and i'm gonna start with a one and a half inch block so we're gonna we're gonna build the log cabin first okay and we're gonna do a cheats log cabin so i'm gonna do it a different different colorway this way okay i'm gonna use this one uh these these two sorry which way around am i gonna do it? hang on which one do i need yes i'm gonna use um 
I'm going to use these three and I'm going to use this as the centre this time. Again, I'm using scraps, so I'm just trying to use up what I've got. So we're going to do the purple as like the two sides and then we're going to do the blue and the floral on the other two sides. So I'm going to start with the purple. And because it's only one and a half inches, you can use up all your tiny, tiny little scraps. OK, so I'm going to start actually by cutting that piece so I can use that bit up. I want one and a half inch strips. Hi, Marion. How are you, lovely? So, how has everybody been anyway? Have you all been OK? Is everybody all right? So hang on, I'm just going to iron that. And we're going to start with. So log cabin, it doesn't matter what size you start with, OK, um, the, the centrepiece. I've chosen one and a half this time. But you want your, your first one piece to be exactly the same. So that's also a one and a half inch square. And we're going to put those right sides together. And we're going to stitch down there a quarter of an inch. OK, we're going to do it a cheat. So we're not going to measure anything. We're going to measure as we go. OK, but I'm going to stitch down there and then we're going to come back. The first few rounds, we're going to be backwards and forwards a lot, I'm afraid. So you're just going to have to bear with me. OK, um, bear with the camera. And then once we get around to like the second round, once you've got all sort of worked out what you're doing, um, we're going to... I'll just do it all at the machine just for easiness, okay? So just stitch down quarter of an inch there, uh, like that. In fact, let me just move some of these bits out of the way. So I've got a little bit more room. And then we're gonna iron this one out. The first one's nice and easy. It's really the only measurement-y bit you do, okay? So I'm just gonna iron that out. And you iron it out, to always iron it out towards the fabric you've just put on. OK, so this is my centre. This is my first row. I'm then going to grab another piece like that. I'm not going to measure it. Make, give it a quick press and then I'm going to line it up. So I'm going to work because I'm right handed. I'm going to work anti-clockwise. It just works better for me that way. If you're left handed, you might find it easier to do it clockwise. I'm going to line it up on that edge there. OK, and we're going to stitch down. It doesn't matter that this is too big. We'll cut that off afterwards. It's the cheats way. Cheats way of doing log cabin. OK, so I'm going to go down that one there. OK, like that. This will build really quickly once we um, we get going. OK, so like that and open that one out. I'm not even going to bother to chop that off at the moment. I'm just going to turn it now again. And now I'm going to I'm always going to do the purple on what two sides. And just because I feel like it, but you could do two, you could do four different colours, you could do two and two, but I'm going to keep the purple all as one side and I'm going to keep these two alternating. So I want to start with uh, the floral. OK, so I'm going to the piece I've just put on, I'm lining up to that edge there. Oh, no, I'm not. I like I'm always lining up to the centre edge like that because it's cheats because we're going to trim it afterwards. I'm going to stitch down. I'm not going to stitch all the way to the end. I can just kind of feel when I've come off this piece. If you're um, doing log cabins with um, jelly rolls, super, super quick, because you haven't even got to cut your little strips. OK, there we go. It's that one. And over we go again. Set my seam and then roll it out. OK, like that. And then I'm going to turn it. And now I'm going to put a piece along here and that's going to be uh, this fabric in fact that's a shorter piece yeah that will go will that fit on there yes it will okay so I'm going to put that on like uh, that okay and then we're going to stitch across there and then and then we're going to trim it all down uh hi, hi Emmy hi Lindy Lou hi Marion hello my darlings how are you all hopefully you're all okay Sarah's had a uh, Sounds like she's had a busy week in the shop while I've been off. <laughs> I think it, the world and their wife has been to visit. <laughs> you all knew I wasn't there, that's why. Mind you, saying that, she's the one that persuades everybody to buy fi fabric, not me. <laughs> okay, so there's my first round done, nice and quick. Okay, what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to square this up. Okay, so it should square up to three and a half. Okay, so I'm just going to, yeah, like that. OK, so what I'm doing is I've got a little triangle bit there on that centre like that. 
you don't have to square up each round I just tend to square up the first round just find it keeps everything a little bit you know neater as I'm making like that and like that okay so there's my first round now I don't know if you can see can you see this piece has got three pieces of fabric in it that's how I remember which side I'm going to do is I'm always going to add on from now on to the piece that's got three so like it like this side here's got two this one's only got one this one's only got two but this side here's got one two three that's how I remember it and these next two are always going to be purple so I'm gonna grab a piece of purple mega long and I'm gonna go from there to there like that okay I'm just going to chop that off a little bit I'm going to stitch that down I'm going to put this next one on as well directly at the machine okay so over we go back here um uh Emma can I ask about the block that was in the last video on the wall what it's called <laughs> so it's the one that's behind me now um it's called crown and glory it's not a block that is available yet it is um the retreat block it will be available um but not till after the retreat so if you come on one of our quilt retreats um, i'm just gonna um finger press this out so i can put the next one on so i'm finger pressing that one on one two three so it's this edge um, if you come on one of our quilt retreats um i we always design a brand new block for um the quilt retreaters um it will then become available to everybody um after the retreat about about two or three weeks after the retreat we release it to the public but when's the retreat it's in april lovely we have got um two retreats in april and two retreats in november so um actually in like three weeks time now uh, the 11th of april so the block um i'll show you in a second i'll go to the um the other camera um and you can see it i've been i've put the whole quilt together now um I, that's one of the things i've been doing while i've been off there we go so those two are on now I'm just going to trim those off. So all I'm doing is just going in line with the fabric like that. Trim off that excess there in line with this piece and trim off that excess there. Um, so yeah, it will be available by the end of April. Okay, so, um, but the retreaters get it first, I'm afraid. <laughs> um, right, so where I'm going, one, two, three. So this, I'm doing this one, the middle one. So that's going on there like that. And then I want a piece for this side. So is that going to be long enough, that one? Yes, it is. So I'm going to put those two on. So I'm going to go back over to the machine and add those two. Um, okay. Um, so yeah, it will be available, lovely, but not until after the retreat. Hopefully, uh, you're, you're just going to have to be patient for that one, I'm afraid, unless you're, uh, unless you're coming on the retreat and then you get it then. <laughs> Uh, what's that jacket off topic but do you have any meterage of the blue belt we don't I'm afraid um, it was supposed to come in with the um, pre-cuts but it didn't um, so I don't other people may have it try so in studio but we don't have any at the moment I'm afraid you know, press that one out and then I can put this one on along on there oh it's is it long enough oh it's just whoo that's on by the skin of its teeth. It's only just long enough. <laughs> yeah, we do retreats in April and in November. They are all sold out. All four are sold out now. We do two in April, two in November, and they are all sold out. However, we are looking at putting another one on. It won't be this year, but it will be next year. Um, in a different location, a bit further north. Um, so that um, our followers up there can come join us. Although, to be honest, people from the retreats come from all over. So again, I'm just going to, ooh, see that one, teeny tiny bit small, it's within my seam allowance, so it'll be fine. It'll be fine. And I'm gonna put four rounds on. I need it to be bigger than the, my, basically six and a half inches, okay? I need to be, a, 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 sorry, bigger than my six and a half inch ruler for my template to fix, a fit. So I'm not going to trim anything off that. Now I'm going to put more purple on. So that one there, just press that second. Um, that one's going to go on there. And oh, I haven't got a piece big enough. I'm going to have to cut another piece. Hang on. I'm going to have to another cut another one and a half inch strip. Just fold that up. Uh, one and a half inches. There we go. 
and that piece will go on this side. So again, I'm following my one, two, three. I want my purples that side. We're going to put those two purples on and then we'll come back over here. Basically, it's four rounds you need. So that's one, two, three. This is the third one that I'm going on and then I'm going to need one more. Okay. Uh, fa what fabric am I using today? Uh, this is Scraps Air Me from um, my ever-loving lo scrap bucket. It's Liberty. Um, it's about two years old, but I've got so many scrap buckets. I'm trying to make any like any demos. <laughs> I'm trying to uh, use up my scraps, and because this was all only had little bits of it, like less than fat eighths of it, um, I thought, oh, I can cut my one and a half. But these are Liberty ones. Uh, we have got a brand new Liberty range on the website, which Sarah put on this week, um, which is my stunning blues. Um, all blue and white, um, really, really cute. Um, I can't remember what it's called. She did do a little um, a little live last week of it, I think, but it's definitely on the website now. A lot of our liberties are in the clearance section as well. There is um, loads and uh, loads of liberty in the clearance section, but this this is one from about two years ago. I can't remember what it was called though. I can't remember what this range was called. So, there we go. There we go. Ooh. Check me out. I've got a new little iron. There we go. Just iron those two out like that. And give that one a press now because I just finger pressed it. And then we can trim those bits off. Sometimes I find it easier to do it like two, you know, two sides and then trim off the other two sides. It's only really the first one that I square up like that. Okay. And then we're back to these two sides. Now have I got a piece long enough? Yep, that one's going to go on there. Have I got a piece long enough of that? No, I haven't. I've got a little tiny bit more here. Actually, is this still a salvage on any of these? I don't think they are because they're all scraps. Just trying to see if I can see the name. No, they're um, they're two. I've cut the salvages off as well. Um, I used this when we did the quilt along the medallion quilt along um i am working on a new quilt along actually hopefully that will be out in the we'll be doing that in the next couple of months um but there's a lot going on at the moment uh what kind of level of sewing do you need to go on the retreats um you don't need absolute newbies lovely from we've got literally everybody from right, i'm going to do that side and then i'm going to do this side we've got everybody literally from People who've only been sewing a couple of months come on um, because the the workshops are designed so that you know a, a newbie can do them, but those who are more experienced, um, you know, can do them as well. Um, we've got people there that have been sewing for 30, 40 years. We've got some people who are dressmakers and who just want to get into a quilting, so they're relatively new. Um, there really isn't, you know, um anything that any well Anne will tell you and Anne, Anne, Anne's been on all of our retreats she's I've just seen she's popped online hello my lovely um it really is a mixture of all levels you know if you've got a sewing machine and you can sew a straight line and you're interested in quilting then you can absolutely come on the retreats it's not we are not precious at all we're not like oh well, you've got to be quilting for years or you've got to know this we have absolute newbies right up to really experienced and everybody is so helpful Honestly, we haven't, you know, the retreats are so much, sorry, I know I'm going on about it a bit, but you're asking questions. <laughs> um, genuinely, I've, we have such a good time. It's, everybody is so lovely and people have made really good friends and they've visited, you know, each other, despite not being on the retreat and all and stuff. And we just laugh a lot. It's just, it's a lovely, lovely few days. Learn lots of skills. You get fed really well. <laughs> And, uh, you know, just just have a good time. Have a good time with lots of people who love sewing in whatever form, you know. We have some people who do every workshop. We have other people who um, only maybe do one workshop. We've had, we have some ladies who come and don't do any of the workshops and just bring their own projects. Um, that's good. Thank you. you. May look at next year's I'm only in Hutch. Oh, lovely. Yes, yeah, so we're... Um, right now, let me just double check. Just check, so I'm use, going to use my template, can I, ah, there we go, that's big enough, one, two, three, four, there we go, that, see that went too quickly, didn't it, <laughs> I was going to put another round on them, but I don't need to, 
So, like I said, I'm using our Modern Drunkard's Path template, which is the six and a half inch one. In the pattern, you get the convex and the concave piece, okay? And now we're gonna cut this out. Now, because I've got, this is like the majority of the fabric, I'm gonna cut away my curve there. So I'm keeping this bit and having a little bit of this showing. Now, this might seem a bit wasteful, it might, but I'm all right with that because I'm you know, creating something new. So I'm just checking where that center block is because I, I really want that center block to be near, roughly in the center, as near as damn it, which it is. That's about right on the template, like that. You put a pin in, hold it in place. You could make a template, once you've got the pattern, you can do it with um, template plastic as well if you're gonna do lots. Uh, and then I'm just going to cut around the template. Now I'm going to cheat a weeny bit because it's easier with a rotary cutter. You can draw it out and use scissors if you want, but I'm cheating a weeny bit. Ooh, hang on, I'll just line that back up. There we go. And then I'm going to freehand this curve using that edge of the template as my pattern. Okay, um, sorry, going back to uh, what you said, Sandra, about Hertfordshire. Yeah, so we do um, the four, t four um, retreats in Upton St. Leonard's, which is um, just off uh, just between Gloucester and Cheltenham. Um, so just it's Junction 12 um, on the M5, so not horrendously far from you. Um, and um, but we're looking at a northern one as well, we're looking at a northern one. So um, we've had people, we had people come down from um, the Orkney Isles um, last November, which was amazing. I mean, what I've done as well is I've then used the concave piece just to cut out a background piece. Okay, so I've just used that to cut out just from white, but this could be any colour at all. Now we're going to do the curvy bit, okay? <clears throat> you might have seen this. I did this, um, Debbie Shaw and I did this on uh, Crate and Craft last time I was on and she'd not seen this method and she actually had to, had, had to go live on air and having never done it before, she did it straight away. This is easy, I promise. Now, normally with the Drunkard's Path, you'd have to find your centre, find your centre, you pin it all together, you pin, you, know, you pin the bejesus out of it, don't you? And you get it all in and then you have to go really, really slowly. We're not going to do that. We're going to basically freehand this in. So, th that's my right sides. I'm going to put this so this is right sides together, like that. And you get to this point where you think, that is never going in there. That doesn't look right. It does, it's not going to work. But it will, I promise. Just put a pin in, just one pin, just till to, to you get to the uh, sewing machine, right? So I'm just going to put a pin in there, and then we're going to go round. Okay. Uh, oh, sorry. <laughs> I read that is Herefordshire. Sorry, Sandra, that was me being an idiot. Herefordshire. Herefordshire is very good. <laughs> yeah, Hertfordshire is much further apart, isn't it? Sorry, love. I had, I had Herefordshire <laughs> in my head. Uh, Debbie was amazed too. She really was. She was like, I've never seen this method. I was like, it's not mine. I was taught it years and years and, oh God, 20, 15 years ago when I first started quilting. But it's, I don't know why more people don't use it. Uh, hi Aline, how are you? Lovely. Uh, you didn't know there was a seven o'clock just back to Manchester. Oh yeah, we just, um, I'm technically on holiday, but I, th I thought I'd do one for you. So what we're gonna, I'm going to do is you really want a quarter inch foot with a guide on for this method. It, you know, with the little guide bar thing, it really does help. You can do it without, but this helps. Okay. So I'm going to put, put my foot down and just take a couple of stitches, literally two little stitches. Now, I was explaining this on TV the other day. Normally we sew like this, don't we? So we've got our hands this way and this hand deals with this fabric and this hand deals with this fabric. God, I'm sorry, it's really dark today. I don't understand why, why the camera's so dark. Oh, I'm just trying to move it a weeny bit. See if that gets, get a little bit. It's almost like it's got a big shadow on it. Why has it got so much of a shadow? That's bizarre. Hmm, okay. I think the camera might be playing up a bit, but hopefully you can see. So I've taken a couple of stitches just to rank it. Uh, Eileen, you love this technique. I know this is great, this one. You did our the Modern Drunkard's Path um, class, didn't you? So instead of this hand working this one and this one hand, hand working this one, you're gonna cross your hands, basically. And your left hand is gonna control the right fabric and your right hand is gonna control the left fabric. And I tend to use my middle finger, 
And what I'm going to do is just line up those two. I'm going to take that pin out now. I've anchored it. Don't want any pins in the way. I'm going to line up those two edges just about an, three quarters of an inch down and use my middle finger to anchor it like that. To hold them together. I'm going to try and keep my raw edges butted against that guard. I'm going to take a few stitches like that. Okay. I'm going to use my middle. See, this one is just holding this in place and my left hand this do, crossing your hands means you can see what you're doing. If you try and do it this way, your finger, I can't see what I'm doing. My fingers are in the way. So by swapping my hands, I can take a few stitches, anchor down, hold that fabric flat with the raw edges together, all the way around. And I can kind of use this finger just to smooth. It will feel really, really odd when you first start okay it's gonna feel very strange and like your hands aren't in the right position but after you've done it a few times you can do these amazing curves without any kind of pins or you know puckers or anything they just go in perfectly and eileen will tell you because she did this class having never done this um technique before Anne as well and did this class this isn't just because I've done it loads okay but it's I know it's easy to say oh you know well you've done it loads blah 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 you make it look easy honestly all the ladies that came to the class within two circles they'd got it they'd absolutely got it you know it's not difficult I promise you okay so looks a bit of a mess at the moment you know it looks like mm, that's not going to work but it will naturally want to push out normally we we press to the dark side so i'd be pressing the seam under but it doesn't want to do it when you do this it wants to press it out that way okay so i'm just going to give that a gentle press press it out like that and that curve is in perfectly it's completely flat it's no puckers you can see on the back as well there's no puckers or anything it just goes in and by crossing your hands you know you can see what you're doing you can actually see that you can guide it in round it's very very they, yeah and also yeah she'd never done it before everybody got it like that really really quickly what we're going to do now is square that up okay so um you can use a six and a half inch ruler if you've got one if you haven't and you've only got a big ruler <coughs> You can square this up nice and easy. Oh, hang on. Oh, I was thinking, why is this upside down? It's literally upside down. <laughs> it's inside out. What you're looking for is, let me try and do this. Let me put a piece of white paper behind it for you. Oh, hang on. There we go. You're looking for the six and a half inch line, and then you're going to go down a quarter an inch. Okay, so where the six and a half inch crosses the quarter inch line, just there. Okay, I'm going to keep my eye on that point there and six and a half down the side of the ruler and then quarter an inch in and it's that point there if it helps put a tiny bit of masking tape or you know, a dot or something that will wipe off just on there okay those are the two points i'm looking for so six and a half and down a quarter inch i'm going to put that on the curve here okay and then if i go six and a half and quarter inch in i don't know if you can see that i am nowhere near the curve okay curves all the way over here and I'm a quarter inch out so what I'm going to do is I'm going to move it I'm going to move the ruler until that point there and some you're kind of moving on a sort of diagonal axis okay and you wiggle it around and you move it until both of those points that quarter inch down there quarter inch in there on the six and a halves hit that curve okay that's the bit you're looking for and once you've got those in you know this this is going to fit this is going to work okay brace it down go up the side and along the top get rid of that excess okay and then we're going to turn that and now we can cut exactly six and a half by six and a half so six and a half there six and a half there and when i line those up on those edges there's another little double check to make sure I've done it right. I can see that my quarter inch line there is just hitting the curve. 
and my quarter inch line here is just hitting the curve that's what I want that's your seam allowance so that your square your circles will go together circle scare you honestly Sandra don't be scared of this method it's it's genuinely the easiest thing in the world everyone says that oh circles scare me I don't like oh I'm not doing curves not a chance this method works every single time I've now got a perfect circle in there a perfect drunkard's path as a six and a half inch block but with this pretty log cabin instead instead of this being a plain piece of fabric I've got this really pretty piece here you can make it in as many as you like and you can do you can put them together like that okay obviously when that's sewn together I'd lose that little bit so it'd be exactly like that or you can do full circles which I think would be really interesting with the with the um uh the log cabin in there okay it makes a really interesting if you used if this was really scrappy or a theme you'd have this really interesting you know make a whole circle it's almost like it oh if you did it all in blacks and greys it'd be like a death star with all those bits and you've got your portholes <laughs> those star wars girls out there you know or you can do petal shapes which work like that okay so you can then make those beautiful petal shapes you know which look beautiful on a quilt you can do lots and lots of blocks like that it's just a really clever technique this this drunkard's curve one like i said it's not mine i took, look, learned it from a lady in a class years and years ago but i like the idea of messing around and making a block and then curving it up death star block i know death star block i think that would work wouldn't it claire can you imagine with all those lines with different greys and, and blacks and stuff with that they look like little portholes you know if luke stays on target he, he'd get a bomb in there <laughs> any hints on joining diamonds um yeah uh, uh, absolutely yeah, and because you've got sorry i'll just finish off here and then i'll go to the diamonds lovely so um you know because you've done that little quarter inch thing when you then join these together you know you've that's your seam allowance so when you put them together like that you're not going to have this white here those circles are going to be you know just skimming each other so they look like they're butted up you could then where's that where's the cut off bit where's the bit that i've cut off what have i done with that <laughs> where's that gone where's the bit that i've cut off oh my goodness wow it's just vanished where's the bit that was here these are just strips <laughs> well I never that is literally just vanished off the face of the sewing room I was gonna say the bit that you've cut off <coughs> you could use for the three and a half inch blocks and and you know the, this this piece here of the log cabin you could cut the concave bit out the three and a half but it's literally vanished that's crazy where's it gone it'd be in pep there it is it got all muddled up there we go <laughs> okay not not big enough although you could put another two pieces on i suppose not big enough for that concave bit but if you if you buy the pattern you get the three and a half and you'd absolutely get the three and a half out of that bit so this bit necessarily wouldn't be wasted it would be um you'd be able to use it you know or cut this is your plain fabric and these is a log cabin or something else you know play around with them it's a it's another what if block what if i do this so that's my curved log cabin let's go back to get yellow for the portholes would look like lucas hit the spot yes i love it <laughs> let the force be with you <laughs> so um it wasn't on the floor I, I did find it right let me just go back to um uh all, all these Star Wars fans see there's a few so, hints of joining diamonds hi we're going to come back here uh Emmy if you're still there that's the quilt put together um let me get out of the way you can just about see it um I've done four blocks I haven't put the border on yet I'm working on it but that was that will be released to non-quilt member quilt retreat members um after the retreat okay I will put it on for and I'll I'll do a um uh, a tutorial on it as well but like i said sorry but not till after the retreat <laughs> um 
Jackie, what did you say? <coughs> Hints for joining diamonds. Is it diamonds that are English paper piece in or diamonds just pieced? If it's diamonds just pieced, you got to do your Y seams. Mark those quarter of an inches. You know, are you doing them like tumbling blocks so that they're sat and they become a cube? You've got to move, you've got to got to look at Y seam. I'll do a um, maybe next week. I'll do diamonds joining diamonds and Y seams if that helps. I could do that on one of either the block of the week. I'll do it on the block of the week. We'll look at diamonds and how to join them and Y seams and stuff if you like. Um, if that would help. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Um, I'm not quilt of tide. <laughs> uh, oh, thanks, Emmy. Yeah, it's. Um, I'm really pleased with it. I've used the marigold jelly roll, but I think it would look very different depending on what um, what one you use. Um, anyway, I'm going to go, my lovelies, because that's it for me today. Sarah is back tomorrow at one o'clock. She's going to be here and doing something. Um, piece so you can do diamond blocks to make a bigger diamond. Yes, I will. I'll do that as the one, uh, the block of the week next week, lovely, because we should be back to normal next week. We should be Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, because holidays are over. Shop is shut Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, so we can have a little Easter break. Um, apart from the fact I've been on holiday, but <laughs> um, ouch! Don't touch the tattooed eyebrows; they're sore. Um, but Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, we'll be back to normal next week. So I will do joining diamond blocks in different methods and different ways. I'll do that as the block of the week for you, if that's OK. Um, cool. And like I said, Sarah will be back tomorrow at one o'clock. I cannot remember what she's doing because I was away when they decided. I can't remember. She did tell me, but I've forgotten. So anyway, tune in tomorrow at one o'clock. Have a lovely evening. I'm going to go and have some tea with my husband because... He's still not gone back to London. He's oh, three weeks. He's been home three weeks. <laughs> um, oh, just as a real quickie. Uh, I told you all a few weeks ago that um, I'm going to be a granny again, that Rory and Cara are um, expecting end of July. We found out that found out on Monday what she's having. I'm having another little boy. We're having a little grandson. <laughs> so little man's going to be a big brother to a little brother. We're very excited. I am destined to be surrounded by men. That's what it is. <laughs> um, but yeah, very, very excited. All happy, healthy, looking good. She's doing really well. And the bit, little, little boy is doing very, very well as well. So um, so now they're just arguing about what a boy's name is going to be. Because <laughs> they could, they had a girl's name picked out. They didn't have a boy's name. So, um, But yes, we're, we're very excited to have an, a new little, little man. It's li a littler man. So, um, so yeah, we're all very excited. Uh, Sarah's doing super quick hexes. Oh, there we go. Anne remembered. Super quick hexes for, for Sarah tomorrow. So that will be at one o'clock tomorrow. Anyway, I, he's just opened the door to tell me that dinner's ready. So I'm going to go. Um, and I will see you all next week. Happy, happy Easter, everybody. Hope you have a lovely, lovely Easter break. And um, we'll see you all soon. Take care, my loves. Bye.